Good morning everybody, it's uh, Brett here, Lionheart84, uh, exotic UK fruit growing enthusiast. Um, it's the uh, 23rd of June, um, pleasant morning, slight breeze here, it's a lot warmer than it has been, uh, obviously hoping the sun's going to come out later, in which case it could be, you could reach 26, 27 degrees, so about 77, 78, which is quite pleasant for June in the UK. Um, as you know from looking at most of my videos, I've got quite a reasonable collection of uh, pretty hardy, um, what for the UK is considered to be very exotic <laughs> or very unusual fruits. Um, I've got, if you look, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll see I'm, I've got persimmons, I've got figs, I've got pineapple guavas, I've got chocolate vines, I've got pomegranates, I've got mulberries. I've got some jujubes, so uh, basically, uh, and I've got chili guavas. I've got quite a collection of, of, for this country, very unusual fruits and would be considered quite exotic. But uh, sort of the ones that feature regularly are actually very hardy plants. So I thought today I'd do a short video on my true tropical fruits that I've got as well. Um, they're all fairly small plants, but. Uh, I thought it'd be worth doing a short video in case anybody's interested to see what you can try and grow in the UK. Um, I'm really only growing them for the plants just as a challenge. Uh, I'm not expecting to get any fruits on them. I mean, there's a possibility on a couple of the uh, easier to grow, more compact ones, but these ones have to be kept inside of winter, obviously, because they'll only take down to about five degrees, uh, five or six degrees centigrade, which is about sort of 40, 45 Fahrenheit. Some of them will take a light frost, but more than one frost, and they'll probably be finished. But um, I thought I'd show what I've got. They have to go inside in winter, um, hence the reason they're not too large. And uh, I've been overwintering in my kitchen. Now I put them outside as my normal habit on the first week of June, but unfortunately, this year, the first two weeks of June were very, very unseasonably cold, much colder than we'd even expect in the UK with uh, cold winds and very large amounts of rain. So I think, excuse me, dry throat. So I think it's fair to say that the tropicals look pretty rough. <laughs> they took a very bad hit. Uh, a lot of them have got sort of damaged, damaged leaves, young shoots that died, they got very waterlogged in the pots, but I thought it'd be worth doing a short video now because um, I can do another video in a couple of months time and hopefully we'll get a warm July and August. I'm hoping that some of them will make a reasonable recovery, but this video is just for anybody who might be interested in trying to grow something exotic here in the UK, just for personal interest, whether it's a guava or a custard apple or a mango. Um, don't necessarily expect them to get fruit here, but uh, but it, 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 sometimes it's just nice to grow something different for the challenge, and uh, it's it's decorative. So uh, I shall uh, stop the video in a second, switch the camera around, and do a little tour of my small, true tropical fruit collection. See you again in a moment. So, here we are again with my camera reversed. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm using a Samsung tablet here and you can't actually reverse the camera while the video is running. Um, you have to sort of stop it, hence the reason for starting out on one and then going on the other. So I thought I'd show my small collection. Now, this first one is my Mango Varieties Keat. The reason I bought that one is it's reputed to be quite a, a dwarf grain mango plant and there is an outside chance of it fruiting when it's about five or six feet tall. It has suffered some damage on the leaves from the cold winds but hopefully there's a, going to be some improvement now. Now the second one along, not the purple leaf plant, that's, uh, that's an Ionium matra purpurea but as you can see we've got a long one here, the variety is, I uh, don't know how you pronounce that, how, Hugh, not too sure. Now this one unfortunately was still in the kitchen when it got sun scorched. I'd forgotten to water it. Um, most of the leaves got badly damaged and it hasn't helped by putting it out in our cold wind. So obviously where that recovers remains to be seen. Now behind it is one of my seed growing 
mustard apples. This is a cherimoya, this one. It's not doing too badly. It doesn't like the winds particularly. As you can see, it's quite a breeze today, but I think that's um, they're pretty tough and it'll recover quite well. Obviously, it's not named variety because it's a seed growing. My tropicals are mostly either seed growing or grown from cuttings or purchased plants. <clears throat> now, this one, which is looking very healthy, and these are pretty tough. Still plenty of growth on it, even outside in these temperatures. This is my red strawberry guava, or known as cherry red cherry guava in some uh, in some countries. I'll put the Latin name a bit later, or maybe I can show the uh, might be to show the label actually. Let's see if that'll focus. There we are. Cidium cattleyanum, guayabo tree. Well, by Fraser, strawberry guava. The one behind is a straightforward uh, Passiflora edulis. That's the common purple fruited passion fruit. Um, fairly pale looking the leaves. I repotted that and found out that the roots had mostly rotted. So obviously I'm hoping to get some recovery on that. Remains to be seen. Here's another one of my seed growing cherimoyas. That's a good sort of seven feet tools so that's doing very well and tucked away behind it there is a small uh, a small normal guava that one's that variety is called stone ruby I have no idea if it's a pink or red or white flesh guava um, and no one seems to be able to tell me either so we'll wait and see um, this small one here is not a seed grown custard apple. This one is, let me have a look and see, Anona Cherimola Madeira. So that's a Cherimola, so that's, I think that's the rough skinned custard apple, that one. So it has to be quite hardy. Behind it is my papaya. Well, at least I thought it was a papaya. It was grown as it was bought as a young seedling and, li and listed as papaya carica, which is a regular papaya. But looking at the leaves, which a slightly different cut to a normal papaya leaf, and looking at the, I have had some flowers on this, and it looks to be some embryo fruits. And I would say that looks more like babaco, which is a mountain papaya. So I would think that was mislabeled by the company that. Uh, that I bought it from, but not too wide because babaco are hardier than normal papaya. And behind here, tucked away behind here, is a rose apple. Now this is another one that unfortunately got scorched because I've got large glass kitchen windows. This one was in the window and again I didn't realise that I hadn't watered it enough and unfortunately a lot of the new growth got burnt off. But I'm hoping that being outside, if I get some warm weather, it's going to make a full recovery. Now, down at the bottom here, this is another one of the custard apple family. This is uh, Nona cross atomoy. This is Gefna. This is one of the uh, knobbly fruited uh, custard apples. And it's been repotted, looking okay again. It hasn't enjoyed the cold weather and the cold winds we've had, but it's uh, seems to be making a recovery. Behind there is a very sad looking Tahitian lime. Lost most of its leaves when it came outside. I think it's been suffering from root rot, so um, I'm trying not to water that, but of course when we get torrential rain, not much we can do about it. Here is a young well, that's a sapodilla, Mamulcara zapota. These are evergreens. Cold wind's not been cheering the leaves up, but again, it's looking okay. So I think we get some warm weather, it'll be fine. This one is a lychee, not a named variety. There's a good reason for that. This one I bought as a complete plant, and when it arrived in the box, the whole top part of the plant, which was and Mauritius had snapped off in the box. So you can see the top of the stem there. So the whole of the grafted plant had snapped off and it left me with a completely bare stem, but I decided not to throw it away. And in fact, the, uh, the seedling 
stem or the rootstock has completely spouted into growth well obviously it will be grown from seeds it's quite likely that the uh, that the fruits if it ever produces anybody won't be edible but I thought I might as well leave it <clears throat> there's my little loquat there still got some fruits on it I haven't picked them one of my favourites tucked away at the back here I've left it in the shade is the Inga edulis which is the ice cream bean tree um, I've left it in a shaded area seems to be sending out lots of new shoots I know they're pretty hardy so I'm hoping that if you look at the video in a couple of months time we'll have seen a fair amount of growth on that <clears throat> this is my one of the plants I've had a longer period of time this is another guava this is uh, a green yellow for a guava I don't think much difference between the varieties um, pretty good chance of these flowering in this country as long as you look after them so uh, we'll keep uh, keep people updated on that one behind here I have another mango now this variety is a Canarian bread variety which is called uh, Gomera this is a Canarian mango which isn't grafted it's supposed to be much hardier and more frost resistant than the other mangoes. Um, I don't think the fruit's particularly good quality, but I thought as it was hardy, it was well worth growing. Tucked away behind here is another lychee. Let's see if we can get the label out for people to save me typing them all out on the, on the video later. Let's see. Lychee or lychee chinensis, quai, my pink so not doing much at the moment I find lychee very slow growing and hard to grow here they don't, don't like our climate at all but still worth having a go now here is this is my star fruit uh, not a name variety it's just but it is a grafted star fruit so one assumes although they haven't told me what varieties it should be quite a good one now these hate high winds <laughs> They're like a sheltered spot, so this one's really taken a battering out, and especially as the winds were very cold. But there are signs of recovery, there are some young shoots. So I think if we have a couple of months of reasonably warm weather, uh, I look after them, should make uh, a reasonably full recovery. And my final semi exotic fruit, or at least Mediterranean fruit, is my grapefruit. This variety is Star Ruby had a fair amount of new growth uh, which is still fairly yellow so I think it's suffering a little bit from chlorosis so I might have to use some more Epsom salts on that and I can see that there's uh, there's another flush of fresh growth starting out there so uh, I think this one will do fine they quite like it outside here for the summer months uh, in practice I leave my true exotics out from uh, I leave them out from end of June until, uh, well, sorry, beginning of June until the end of September. They have to come inside or at least come somewhere sheltered. But that's my little exotic fruit collection. Um, not a vast collection, but not bad for the UK because there's very few people who have any exotic fruits growing here. Very few people are as mad as me to try and grow them. I think the best one, best chance I'll have is for the is for the strawberry grafters because I think they fruit when they're very small and they're very hard and will probably take light frosts. I have got the lemon variety as well, which I showed in a video last week. A few young plants inside, but this is my outdoor collection. Thank you for watching. If you've watched this video, much appreciate your time. Please click like, subscribe, share if you want to, and if you want to see how. They're all doing in a couple of months' time, and which ones have died and which ones have survived. Then hit the bell for future notifications. Catch up with your next video. Thanks for watching.